little donors, mom and pops, people like my my parents and my you know other relatives. They say, oh, Lindsey Graham needs money. You know, let's give him some money. I like him. I saw him on television. And suddenly they're like signed up forever to keep getting emails from every Republican in the universe and they can't stop it. The, pu the puppy will die. You know, your mom will mm -hmm. be held hostage. Like the, the messages are so abusive. And then big dollar donors are really sick of giving their $5 million, $10 million, $50 million checks and we don't win elections. I mean, that's not what they're there for. So pretty much nobody is satisfied with the status quo except a significant percentage of the members of the Republican National Committee who have their power, their privilege, their title, their prestige, their photographs of politicians. I'm not there for that. I'm here to win elections so I can go back and enjoy my life. Okay, so speaking of a revolution, now let's talk about what, what your plans are to do with the Republicans. One of the lines that I say on this show all the time is you don't have to be a Republican, but you cannot be a Democrat. And I, I think that's really resonated with an awful lot of people, that the Democrats have lost their mind. The Republicans, it's messy, they're gonna fail you sometimes, but at least there's something there to work with. So what would your vision be of what the Republican Party would truly stand for? You, you hit on a little bit of it earlier, but what's, what's the real vision that, that you wanna sell to the party? Well, first of all, you should be a Republican if you're not a Democrat. <laughs> Should not, I really, let me just put that on the table. Um, it is a zero sum game. There are two parties that, that are relevant in this country. And if you're not winning, you're losing. That's, that's the yeah. fact of politics. Okay. So um, with respect to what I would do differently there, I mean, we probably don't even have time here, but look, the, the party has evolved in a certain direction. It's really been the same two people running it for the last 12 years. The base of the party has, revolu has changed in a revolutionary way during those 12 years. Some of the same staff, from the Reince Priebus era of six years are still running the show at the RNC today. And guess what those staff are doing? They're negotiating contracts that are self-interested. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars has flown into the pockets of consultants over the last few years, and we haven't won elections. The Democrats don't operate that way. The Democrats smartened up after losing elections and paying a bunch of money to consultants almost 20 years ago. And they said, no, 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 we're not gonna do that anymore. The party will only do the stuff that only the party can do. And the party is, plays a very important role. They have certain uh, role with respect to sharing data with state parties, with respect to fundraising, with respect to, you know, parties. they have certain role. But a lot of the stuff the Democrats do is outside the party. They do it in nonprofits, pseudo nonprofits, PACs and whatever. Mm -hmm. But still the messaging is led by a party apparatus that is disciplined on focused on messaging and on their goals. They do not you know, have little disputes with each other in the in the press and members of Congress attacking each other. That just doesn't happen. They have party discipline and they ruthlessly collect money and dump it into our races. And we sit here and say as a Republican Party, oh, sorry, our rules say we can't do anything about that. I'm not saying that the party should be picking candidates in a primary, but what I am saying is you're foolish if you let the Democrats pick your candidates in the primary. We have no plan for that. The election laws were changed on a wholesale basis in 2020 but really incremental for that. Our party was not raising or spending money on election litigation. We were like, oh, oh, there's an election. Let's have some itinerant, you know, temp lawyers put down their laptops and work like a lawyer militia and work for free to save elections for two weeks and then go back to their jobs. It doesn't work that way. We have jobs, we have commitments. You can't just like make me work for free for two weeks. So we have to have been investing like the Democrats did in lawyers like Mark Elias, who is funded to the tune of whatever he wants and files frivolous lawsuits sometimes and just spams the courts with nonsense lawsuits, but they get through and they win if there's no opposition. We have not been doing that until the last two years. I will say the chair listened to me jumping up and down and screaming about it. We began to invest in that issue. We're still way behind. Our cost of fundraising, Dave, is out of control. It's like 40%, okay? I just came from a Turning Point USA event. Turning Point's cost of fundraising, now it's a nonprofit, 7% or so. They raise hundreds of millions of dollars over the same time period that we have. Where's that other 30% going? What's going on there? It's going into the pockets of people who are not helping us win elections. I'm very passionate about this. Little donors, mom and pops, people like my, my parents and my you know, other relatives, they say, oh, Lindsey Graham needs money. You know, let's give him some money. I like him. I saw him on television. And suddenly they're like signed up forever to keep getting emails from every Republican in the universe and they can't stop it. The, pup the puppy will die. You know, your mom will mm -hmm. be held hostage. Like the, the messages are so abusive. 
And then big dollar donors are really sick of giving their five million, ten million, fifty million dollar checks, and we don't win elections. I mean, that's not what they're there for. So pretty much nobody is satisfied with the status quo, except a significant percentage of the members of the Republican National Committee who have their power, their privilege, their title, their prestige, their photographs of politicians. I'm not there for that. I'm here to win elections so I can go back and enjoy my life. And so um, we would be making one of the things that really ratcheted up the ugliness in this race, Dave, it would be very interesting to know that I think on day three of my campaign, I tweeted that I would initiate a top to bottom audit of every consulting and vendor contract at the RNC. And before yeah. that, it was a very genteel exchange of ideas. And isn't it cute that Harmeet's running? Suddenly, every political <laughs> consultant in D.C. is out for my blood, hit, placing hit pieces. Um, but it's all going to come out. It's all going to come out what's been going on there. And then we can talk about what we do about it, because the Democrats don't have this rotten, corrupt system like, like we do. And look, a lot of people in our RNC, most of them are well-meaning, but they don't control what's going on there. And so I think I've, I've had some conversations with members who've been shocked to hear what I've said. And I think I changed their minds because, you know, it's a very top down organization. The RNC tells the states, if you want us to subsidize a particular walk app or method of fundraising, win red, you have to use our system. No choice. We don't give you a choice as to what works better in your state. That's not Republican. The Republican is, is, is pushing power down to the people. It's respecting the people. It's not calling them names. Some of my fellow members of the RNC have called voters low information bitchers for daring to contact them about this leadership race. I love hearing from those voters. I don't call them names like that. They're voters. They may be angry. Sometimes they are. But they're angry for a good reason because they're Republicans and we don't win elections. So, of course, they're angry. I'm angry. So um, I think it is with a relatively simple platform that I've been laying out as I'm talking to the 168, 167 other voters. But I'm also sharing that with the, with the public. And there is virtually no support for the current leadership outside the RNC and the consultant class who, who feed off of us. And so that's been heartening. And so one way or the other, we're going to see change at the RNC. Right. I mean, I agree with the premise there. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of support there, but for whatever reason, and you, people can call it the swamp or the, the deep state or whatever the hell it is, it does keep going. So the outsiders like you always have that, that uphill battle. I, I see sort of two parts of this. You're talking about sort of the under the hood technical stuff like that, that are the problems in terms of voting and what's going on with fundraising. But I think there's also the idea level that it seems like there's a real problem brewing just in the last couple days. Uh, I heard Mitch McConnell say that the number one issue on Republicans' minds uh, is defending Ukraine from Russia. And I thought, man, you know, I'm for the first time in my life since I moved to Florida, I registered as a Republican. But I think the ideas I talk about re resonate with a lot of people on both sides. It's like, that's not in my top 20. And the way he right. said it, I thought, man, I can now see why Republican, you know, the, the OG Republicans have just had it with you guys. What, what do you do about the messaging part that seems very disconnected when he could be talking about, I don't know, the economy, the border, uh, free speech, et cetera? Well, I can't do anything about Mitch McConnell. If I, if I were in the United <laughs> States Senate, I'd be voting for a different leader. I can't do anything about the leadership race in the House where because we didn't do that well, there was no red wave. You have this infighting that's just awful. Friends of mine are throwing stones at each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunate. But I can do something about the RNC, and the RNC does set the messaging. And unfortunately, we've been kind of hostage to whatever happened recently, whatever the Democrats said recently. We're always like reacting to that. We don't seem to be going back to our platform or our basic values, or frankly, even taking a poll and then talking about what Republicans actually care about. Um, we spend millions of, during this chair's tenure. There have been millions of dollars spent on consultants, on messaging issues, believe it or not. And what you see is the result of that. Uh, it's not very good messaging, I'm sorry to say. Sorry to offend the people who are probably going to be very angry and set out more hit pieces about me because of that, but it's true. Our base does not like or appeal. The messaging did not turn out voters. The candidates did not turn out voters. And we sat there like sitting ducks spending a bunch of money on them. And, you know, some of these, can like I said, back to the issue of the left define our candidates, we're letting that happen because we're not doing a good job of picking them and defining them. There's no party 
maybe there needs to be more of a like cabal situation where you get, get together and say, look, guys, we're not going to win in Georgia. We're not going to win in Pennsylvania. We're not going to win in this state or that state if we don't have a candidate who fits this profile. That means our data has to be good. Our, um, our messaging has to be good. We have to have enough money. And we have to be doing litigation around the clock. Election integrity is not a seasonal itinerant worker deal. It ha- I mean, you know, RNC has laid off most of its election integrity staff after the election, as if they're like, we picked the crop and now we're done. No, no, no. We need <laughs> right. to be doing we, we are so far behind the left. We need to be doing this for a decade or two to, until we reverse the tide. And we need to be spending 10x what we're spending on it. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of mindless drivel, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.